comment. Sure, why not? Three hours, no. Today on The Grid, it's our monthly blind photo critiques episode. Eric the Rocket Man Kuna is here. Plus, we're giving away some cool prizes to some folks watching us live. And it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Westcott, check out their new Rapid Box Switch. It has nine light modifiers and 13 quick swap light inserts. Check it out right now at fjwestcott.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X. Power in all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. Scott Kelby here with Mr. Eric Kuna. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hello, Mr. Kuna. Hey, hey. Welcome to the show. Yeah. How's everybody? Oh, we're good. We're good. Everybody's good, right? Yeah, yeah. everybody's yeah. good. We got Christina here moderating for us. Juan is back from just goofing off. He, he, had, he had an excuse every time, but they, you know, they, and they sounded legit. It looks anyway. Like lighting got turned down a little bit, too. This yeah, thing. it does look darker. Yeah. Why is it dark? What we happened? Did, we can never tell. Anyway, welcome to our dark studio where we're lit only by candlelight. <laughs> uh, today is Blind Photo Critiques Day, and uh, we've got some blind photo critiques. We're going to jump in them. Before we do that, this is, this is critically important. Mm -hmm. It is Kathy Perupski's birthday today. All right. Close yeah. friend of the show and just a wonderful person, Kathy Perupski, and my neighbor. She's Happy also birthday, my neighbor. Kathy P. So Eric loves to sing Happy Birthday. Mm. So does our so studio much. audience over there. Help us sing so to much. Kathy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathy. Happy birthday to you. He's yeah, just yeah. walking through. He's just saying the I words am, like I'm he's reading them off a teleprompter. Happy birthday. Anyway, uh, we got some great giveaways for you today. Like I got to go through these real quick because we got to get to some critiques. What are we giving away? Oh. Lens Pro to go. $50 gift card. Great for renting a lens for the weekend or a camera body or whatever, as long as it's not a really good camera body. Uh, yeah. We are giving away. Oh, no, rent a good camera body. No, yes, rent a good camera body. But I don't know if you're going to rent a good one for 50 bucks. Yeah, they're all good. <laughs> I'll, take a, I'll take a photo. We're going to give away a Platypod Ultra right here. This is a Platypod Ultra. Here's how they work. They look like this. Now, this is the max. This is That's We gave this boy. away last week, and we'll give another one away next week. But anyway, this is what it works like. It, it's not a tripod. It's better because that, nobody stops you from Max using combo it. Right there too. That's got it. The really right stuff. The ball, ball head, head and the, the platypod. The max. Anyway, we're giving away the little that's, version that's of this. If you want to max out your credit card, right, right. there. I do use this one sometimes, like if I'm <laughs> doing a football game. But if I'm not doing a football game, that one. I use the one we're giving away today. A little. This fits right in your pocket. It's just so awesome. Uh, we're also giving away a copy of my brand new book. It is yet to be released, but it'll be released in Kindle probably maybe this week or so. Uh, and then the print version, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a month from now, because, you know, it takes them forever to print stuff. That beautiful it's mountain. called The Landscape Photography Book. It is for landscape people who are new to landscape photography. So that is here. And also, this one we already have in print, which mm -hmm. is Photoshop for Lightroom users. Yay. If, you've ever, if you're a Lightroom user and you ever want to learn just the stuff you can't do in Lightroom, that's it. Boom. And we got people joining from all over. Uh, we got Mark here saying, hey, guys, from Skegness. Skegness. And then we got Daniel saying, hey, from Zurich. And then John's here from Southern California. And Andy from Otley, UK. All right. So, Glad to have you guys here today. Yeah. Multinational. All right. One more thing, and then we're going to get to it because I've already got my first mm -hmm. image queued up here. Um, right. We don't run a lot of deals at Kelby One. <laughs> I don't know why, because mm -hmm. we're breaking records with the current one that we have out. But uh, we have a deal. It ends today. It's $40 off our pro plan, which is yeah. it is the lowest price we offer until literally November in like Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. So it is one of the best deals we've ever offered. 
go yeah. to uh, where can they go, go to the Kelby One yeah, go to, site. Go Kelby to the pricing, and it's right there. Go to yeah. the pro page and forty right bucks there. There off. Go, it's right ridiculous, there. and uh, it has been one of our our most successful deals we've done in many years. So get in before the last few hours. It ends tonight. So go join. Right, you know you've always wanted to join. You know you. You're watching, you think, I should join, you know, I really are. Is it worth it? I wonder. This is your chance right here. It doesn't get better until oh. November 20-something. <laughs> and we always get that all the time. In fact, uh, Fernando in the community was turning me on to uh, somebody who was commenting the other day that um, they were like, I just renewed because the community, I mean, it helps me out so much, you know, because oh, the in community there, is amazing. They get all the answers, so. You become a pro member, you get access to that whole community. So it's all the instructors, all the yeah. community members, all that. So any questions you got, you just answer, answer there you ask go. in there. Now, I got to tell you, um, that's all the happiness for today. It goes downhill from there uh, because, number one, we're on a very dark set. Mm -hmm. Number well, two. I think that was for the mood of yeah, the Yeah, for the mood of the pictures we're going to critique today. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Here's our first image. We've asked people to send in uh, their best images. And that's what we asked for, three of your best images so we can critique your work. They're called blind critiques because we don't know people's names. Did you emphasize the I, best? Uh -huh. Uh I did emphasize the best. best. Every time I posted, best. I wrote these words. Send us three of your best, best. photos. Don't, no sense in sending us three just... Okay trashy cool. photos so first one is some sports shots let's take a look real quick here's our first one okay and uh oh start the timer too oh yeah three only minutes. three minutes each so that's our, our new rule and we've been sticking to it three minutes all right so the, these are all properly exposed and unfortunately that's the best thing i can say about them uh this first one Nothing is in this photo is in focus. Now, I know you guys are probably watching on a small screen, maybe on your phone, maybe on a tablet, maybe on a laptop, but I'm looking on a 15-inch laptop. There's nothing in this photo that's in focus There's except some blades of grass. a few blades of grass yeah. and maybe the front oh, shin on oh, the blue guard. Yeah, that's somewhere in there is where the focus point is. Yeah, the focus. So, look, first off, you got to nail your focus on sports shots. It is an absolute must. Put your sensor right on the number on her chest because that will align with her eyes, right? So we try, to, we try to put that the sensor right on the number. You put it on the number, her face will be in focus. Mm -hmm. That's the thing you want. Her eyes got to be in yep. focus. Uh, so this one, this one would go in the trash bin. It's just, besides the and fact, the gesture, let's, let's like just the, pretend. The moment. Yeah. yeah, let's just pretend it was super sharp. Uh, uh, focus this is an awkward shot it's yeah. not a cool shot it's look at the look at the look on both of the players faces it's, it's just awkward um this next one is sharp now mm -hmm. it is probably sharp because it's in the day and you can't avoid it being sharp your shutter speed is so fast right uh, but i would say this you've got two or three things right number one uh you can see his eyes that's an important thing in sports photography. Number two, you can see the ball. There's a saying, two eyes and a ball. Here's the bad part. It's just a dude running with the ball. And, and I, I remember being on a critique, I believe it was with Dave Black, who is, you know, an amazing world-class sports photographer. And Dave's like, what is this shot? What, what is this? And I go, oh, it's sharp. It's in focus. There's separation from the background. I'm telling him all the technical things. He's like, this is crap. This happens every play. It's a guy running with the ball. Who cares? This happens all day. Every single play in every sport in the world that uses a ball. There's a no guy action, running with the no ball. Moment. There's no action. There's no moment. There's nothing. Yeah. It's a guy running with the ball. Yawn. And then the last one is uh, he's going, oh, hey, there's my friend Frank. Hey, Frank. What is this? This is nothing. There's no, there's no ball. Yeah, this it is, could be like, this is just we're number one or hey, yeah. Frank. I love, you know. Yeah, this is like, this stands. is between plays or something. Yeah. All right, look. It's just not a good slow, celebratory it, it, shot because I think right. that's what you're going you're, for is like a celebratory shot. It's not shot. a celebratory yeah. shot. It's just, it looks like, uh, hey, something, uh, my, my, th there's a hole in the net. Can we get this fixed? Look, you got the exposure stuff down. I know, I know this is a harsh one to start with, and I don't mean it, but you, you've got the exposure stuff down. You need more separation from the background. If you really want to move them up, you need a little more separation. So you need a little longer lens or a little more wide open f stop or both. Are you watching the time? Yeah, yeah, we're not there yet. Uh, three. Two, oh, two, one. one. There you go. All right, so that's basically it. Is uh, you got to work on your, um, you got to work on getting more interesting pictures, and of course they have to be sharp. So those two things, 
you got some good stuff going on, Maybe but even you're for gonna the styles you're doing getting lower too. Yeah, getting lower would help, yeah. but but still, that's not gonna help. It's not gonna help you moments. capturing interesting moments that are yeah. like, wow, you want someone. To, no one looks at this picture and goes, wow, it looked like it was great to be there. No one looks at this one and goes, oh, that's amazing, or like it's incredible. No, it's a guy running with a ball. All right, next. All right, let's take a look at what is next. Escapo. Maybe. I'm sorry that uh, took longer than it should have. And All right, let's, let me get my. Here we go. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's super sharp and uh, interesting. Now, if you wanted to take it up a notch, it could be doing something cooler, but it is flying. That's pretty cool. But, you know, obviously. And the processing is really good. Yeah, the, pro the post is really nice. Yeah. Uh, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I have yeah. a shot taken either very close to that or in that same area. Beautiful shot. The yeah. only thing, if I had to critique anything, and it's it's kind of minor, so I, I but it is a lens thing. This building is leaning in a weird way. Yeah. These buildings are leaning in a weird way. There's a black glow around those buildings over here. There's a black glow and a little white outline around. This yeah, you is might just have just gone too far with it. Yeah, but no, but, but I like the way it, yeah, the, yeah. the overall look. This just needs that one little finishing move where you go in there. And guys, on LightroomKillerTips.com, within the last week or two, I did a post on how to get rid of glows, and I showed exactly how to do it. So go to LightroomKillerTips.com, and I show how to get rid of those glows. Also, this looks squashed. Like this right here, this is a panel, right. right? This looks like you need to like almost like select from here over and pull that out another yeah. inch. But that's it's Overall, a lot of what you said is it's the lens, it's the distortion that's yeah, not been removed. I know, but you can fix this. this you is, can fix that. This in is post. such a good shot. It's worth a little extra, but this is this is very good. Very, very I love yeah. that that and this is very nice. The only thing is look at the wonderful long exposure. Yeah, it's not long Take enough. Take this exact same scene and do a really long exposure here because you've got nice light. you got nice stuff here. This is a little distracting, and it's got its own glows. Like, you got to fix that stuff. Yeah, it's got glows around everything. Yeah. we got a glow issue. So, but a little longer because, and the, I love the way the light's falling in here. This could be a really, really nice shot. Just needs another minute or two of exposure. Yeah. It's too short. Yeah, but really, I mean, obviously, this is a very good photographer. I mean, this is this person's shooting pretty, the great compositions, really, really mm -hmm. great compositions. A lot of good stuff going on here. So, good job, good, good job. Little minor post stuff, but you know, there I you mean, go. it. Uh, Overall, good. those are so good that you don't want to let a post-processing thing slow you down, especially when it's actually really good post-processing. Mm -hmm. There's something funky with my grid here. Okay, let's take a look at this. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. Now, this is weird. This looks like a composite. I don't think it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, they also have a, a, a positive vignette. They got that glowing. Uh, there's, the corners actually. The corners are white. white. Yeah, they. Yeah. they well, are. they're trying to. I get. They're going for a look. But. Yeah, go, they're going for the snow look. Yeah. Um, this is the best of the three. You got a little more headroom than you need up there, but it's not egregious. This this one's probably the best of the three. I probably would do this. Wait a minute. I'm I think I know what's wrong here. All right. <laughs> I think I know why this looks like a composite. Mm -hmm. The light is coming from this way, right? Is, mm -hmm. is it? Yes, the shadows. So it's coming from the right, casting the right. shadows across the road. But it looks like well, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not a composite, right? No, I don't believe it is. I, I, I do not believe this is a composite. But you can have things look like a composite mm -hmm. because of the lighting. And I think because of the way the lighting's coming across her, it looks like you've got the light coming from this way, but the light, the way they've positioned their bodies, the light looks like it's coming from over here. I, you can ask them. I don't think it's artificially lit, is it? You want to ask them in the comments? It, it, if you can just tell us if you're watching. But there's something funky with the lighting here. I would brighten his face a little bit. 
but yeah, but because you got a lot of brightness around. It almost them. looks like she's casting a shadow on him, which is why I think it makes it look like the lights coming from mm -hmm. over there. There's a funky lighting thing going on here, but this is really not bad. Uh, this this is okay, but I tell you what would help. Number one, brighten her face. Let me see if I can do it for you. No, not. Oh yeah, okay. Here we go. It's natural light. Yeah, there's something funky with the light. Uh, I thought it was. And then she needs her face brightened. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that's. I'm just doing this in two seconds. I can't swear that that's the, the, the optimum amount of... Uh, it's probably a little bit more than we need. But can you see? Let me move the still, overlay. That's a, that's a big difference. Yeah. So that, that's number one. Number two is she's got sticks coming out of her head. Like, that's like the Kodak day one... Like, you, you, they always say, don't let a tree grow out of somebody's head. If you go back to the early Kodak beginner photographer things, that's what they're going to tell you. Mm -hmm. You could alleviate this by using an f-stop like f2.8. You used f4.5, uh, which is not wide open enough, and you, you're at 50 millimeters. So let's go to 85 or 100, 120 millimeters and shoot at f the lowest f-stop you got mm -hmm. but you need to zoom in tighter because also a, a better crop would be good here too oh man we're out of our three minutes yep. crud all right i'm going to give you like a 30 second a tighter crop would help and you're getting rid of a bunch of other stupid stuff so a, a tighter more flattering crop a little bit of more brighter in the face you don't now you don't have the trees growing out of her head but you're, not, you're but, not focused on it either. Yeah. yeah, a little more separation from that. I think I think you can fix this one. And the last one, real quickly, this is a nice shot. I mean, they look like nice. They look nice people. His face almost looks a little too bright in comparison to hers. I, I'm always very aware of that when I see more than one person. You could bring her brightness up, but also she's got a tree going boom right out of her head. Boom, they're shooting right out of there. Here's what you might could do. This is another cropping issue is let's just get rid of a lot of it. You're not going to get rid of the whole crop for her, but you have a lot of extra stuff. Her, her, her wrist is cut off and stuff. You, you want to go oh, yeah, higher. You're going to pull them up to the top third of the frame, too. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's stronger. Let's I, I know I, I'm going over just there you go. Look at that. And I would, I would almost darken him, hit new, and let's darken his face just a little bit. It's just a little too much. Yeah, to kind of balance him out. Yeah, to kind of balance him out. She needs actually a little more brightening just in general. She's just... Well, yeah, he's I, casting a shadow yeah. on her. All right. But I, I, I like what you're trying to do, and I like that you're getting nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, smiles and expressions. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Smiles and expressions. That stuff, it, it's, you know... There's good stuff happening here. Don't be don't be down on it. But no, that cropping. I mean, cropping is a big thing because if you look yeah. at their dead center in the frame, but bringing them up yeah. to that top third really helps. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of compositional stuff and a little bit of lighting stuff that you can do in post and, and Bob's your uncle. But on all three of them, a little more separation from the background would make a big difference. Shoot at your lowest numbered f-stop. If you can do 2.8, 1.8, that's where you want to be, and you want to shoot with a longer lens than you're shooting. Shooting people with a 50 is, is tough, and there are people that do it really well, but it's you're better off to shoot with a long lens and get that nice separation in the background. All right, coming up next, we've got a lot more to look at. We're doing our three-minute rule. we got some more news, some more stuff. Stick around. Don't go away. We'll be right back here on The Grid. Did you ever find yourself wanting to take amazing portfolio quality images but feeling that the only way to get there is with a ton of gear and a huge production? Well, in this class I want to show you that that's not necessarily the case. We're going to walk around tonight with a group of friends. We're going to bring one camera, one lens, and one light, and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step exactly how to get amazing portfolio quality images with simple gear, simple setups, quick, easy portrait sessions with people that aren't used to being in front of the camera. So join me for a night out with good friends and great photography in my new class exclusively on KelbyOne.com. When you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere. One that is adaptable to any situation. That will prove versatile enough for any shoot. 
and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further. Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by B&H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we're back, Scott and Eric. All right, we got uh, hey. uh, Victoria saying hello from Atlanta. So hello, Victor, Victoria. Victoria Pavlov. I love Victoria. And then we got Keith saying greetings from Newfoundland. And then Lola's call, uh, saying Lola in the house from Little Rock. So, and speaking of uh, traveling, you got a workshop this summer in Paris, right? I do. So I have one in China in September, and it's mm -hmm. sold out. We just sold it out this week, mm -hmm. so that is awesome. And uh, my, I still have a couple spots left in my Paris workshop. So if you want to come with me to Paris this June, it's going to be me and Mimo Madani, and Mimo is just awesomeness. Um, yeah, that's, that's where you go, right yeah, there. Yeah, go to scottkelbyworkshops.com, and uh, all the information is there. Uh, better information is there if you refresh the page that uh, Jason uh, put up, uh, you know, back in the dark ages. Anyway, um, so uh, thank you. Thank you for refreshing. Anyway, come with me to Paris this time where we're going to have a blast. It's June 7th through 10th, and it's four days, an unforgettable. And look at Mimo's in the chat. He says, hello, oh, hello. hello, hello, Mimo's in the chat. Yeah. Hey, hey Mimo. So looking forward to seeing you again, Mimo. I, I've done two workshops with Mimo, and we have, just, we have just had so, so much fun. And Mimo is just a great guy and a great teacher and just a fun guy to hang out with. So anyway, go and check it out, and I uh, hope to see you this summer uh, for four magical days we are going to have. And we've got some things planned. Ooh, we got mm -hmm. some stuff. Yeah. We got some good places and some things. It's going to be awesome. All right. And uh, hey, I want to give you guys got some of those secret places too. We have yeah. secret places and secret things lined up because we, we always do like surprise stuff. And mm -hmm. We've got some good surprises. Hey, um, we also have some nice comments here from people that are Kelby One members. Oh, yeah. uh, Ramona uh, says, I signed up as a pro member this past weekend. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Ramona. Awesome. We're glad to have you on board. Nicole says the pro plan is well worth it. And Sherry says, just got my Kelby One membership. Yay. Yay, you guys. Thank you very, very much. We're glad to have you here. And oh, hey, look, there's Guy. Yep. So Guy Lundstrom was, was on my... Uh, uh, yeah, oh, look workshop. at that. He says, so. I took those Venice shots standing beside you. <laughs> That's why, yeah. That's why similar. I thought I shot from that same place. Yeah. Anyway, Guy's a really nice guy. Guy, you should come with us to Paris. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe you're coming. I have some people from Rome and yeah, from Venice that are coming. So yeah. I tell you what, I will say this. All kidding aside, I get the greatest people at my workshops. By the end of the at the end of the workshop, we're like a family. Like we're doing oh, yeah. everything together. We're eating all. It's just well. That's what's cool about those workshops. Is uh, you become like a family. It is. It's a blast. It's so much fun. You wind up making friends and stuff. It's great. All right, let's look at some more folks. Yeah. We got some more folks. Uh, oh, well, let me let me. I I was working on one here on the on to see if I could fix it here on the break. Let me reset it. Let me just reset. Hang on a second. Oh, come on. Let's just do uh, camera raw defaults. Okay. So I was looking at these three shots. Take a look. Here we All go. All right. Uh, that's nice. That's nice. It's a skyline. Disney. All right. So first off, I, I really like this one. Have you started the clock? Yeah, you have. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I really like this one. 
I, I think that it's really clever um, composition. I like the black and white. It's all good. There's nothing wrong with this, but you know what this looks like? This looks like you were with a, a group of students and you went out and this night was the night you practiced long exposure light trails. There's, like if you were shooting this for the Chamber of Commerce, I'm sure they're thrilled with it. They're like, hey, great, look at that. There's the city. There's our city. But it's not like a spectacular, like you see shots of Dubai and you're like, oh my gosh. And, all, and this is a shot of the city. It, it's not, it's, it's properly exposed. It's a long exposure. It's all well done, but it's a yawn of a photo. It's just like, here's a town. Yeah, I mean, you're, it's not good. Is it it's Atlanta? not bad. That it's looks like kinda, it could be Atlanta. It's a, it's a photo of a skyline at night. Yeah. It's I think it is fun. Atlanta because I think that's uh, Peachtree Plaza, the, that round hotel to mm -hmm. your mid uh, off center. Anyway, I don't know if it is. Doesn't yeah. really even matter. It could be, yeah, it's somewhere. It's somewhere, but it's 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 uh, it's a nice shot. No, I mean it, all the technical stuff yeah, in the photo. I mean yeah. where the horizon line is, where the yeah. buildings are. You know, that's all good. But it's just it's just a it's a meh photo. You don't want to take meh photos. This one has such great possibilities. So it looks like uh, fantasy land as yep. seen from Cinderella's castle. Yep. Uh, when there's no one there, which is, is very rare indeed. Uh, now, there's a couple of things that are killing it. Uh, number one, a longer exposure would have been great. A longer exposure. Uh, so that... I think that right there would, to would get more of the burst, more of the yeah. burst. But but here's the thing, this smoke over here. And I know you can't control that. It has nothing to do with you. But this is kind of killing the that draws your eye right there. Yeah, because it's brighter than the fireworks. Yeah. So when you look at this, you're drawn. Here's what I look at. Couldn't you l just darken that area? Well, you could darken yeah. it. You could certainly go in here and, and let's go in here uh, to camera raw, which uh, it's kind of like Lightroom. And let's go in here. You could certainly darken this. It's it's but you're gonna have to darken, darken this a lot, a lot yeah. to draw the attention away. away yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah, but you see how bright that was? Yeah, yeah that, that's that what was, you're talking about. That was it's really now only now I'm seeing the firework more. Yeah. Than, I, I would take that down even more. It's 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 gotta go. Oh, I gotta actually click on it. it it's, it's gotta, gotta go. It's gotta go. It might even be worth just selecting this area and getting rid of it all together yeah. and just make it, you know, literally black over there. And, and then that would be, I think, certainly much better. Also, you have a person here in the center of the shot. Um, I don't know if it's a maintenance worker or maybe it's a friend that was with you and you said go stand up there, but I can't tell. It looks like a maintenance person. That's killing your shot too. And that would be easy enough to get rid of in Photoshop. Um, the last thing is these the buildings are kind of leaning on both sides in. Mm -hmm. You can fix that by going real I, I know I'm out of time. Yeah. Uh, going to the transform and then uh, it's not the transform, it's uh, that one. And then I'm I'm sorry, I'm a Lightroom guy, so when I get into camera raw, it's like what? Uh, not that, not yeah, that's it's vertical. already vertical. You want to get rid of that kind of like there. You're going to lose, well, you've already lost the top of the arc. And then the vertical needs to be kind of like that. Now, there, are, I am totally cool a lot of times with having things leaning back, but this looks weird. And then you'd have to go in and either crop this away or fix it with content aware fill. There's a shot there and it's worth working. Yeah. So. Anyway, a couple of good stuff. You're, you got some good stuff, and you got some stuff that, like, great composition, meh, and needs work. So, all right, that's not bad. Cool. That's not bad at all. All right. Let's go to, well, we went there already. I guess I'm in the next row. Nope. I guess I'm still in the next row. Why isn't this thing? Trying to find the next one. Huh? Like, is it this one? Oh, no. gosh, sorry. The bridge is acting weird. Let me just put these down the lower. The bridge is weird. The bridge is weird just in general. Okay, now I know where we are. Here we go. Let's look at the next one. Here we go. All right, we have three shots. Mm. All right, you know what I'm going to say about this, right? Oh, look, it's the, the skyline. skyline. Boring and sky. A boring sky. Middle of the day. Flat looking. It, it, there, and ugly trees in the front. There's just not a lot going. It's, this, it's shot with low noise, and it's, it's got the horizon line. The right. It's got the technical. It's just yeah, the wrong time of day and yeah. nothing. And it's also tilting to the left a bit. Yeah. It's, it's got. Don't they, don't do that. Okay. 
here, here's what. Let's look at the next picture. Look at this and then watch the next one. This is a good shot. Yeah, the other one, they just don't look interested at all. Well, they don't look not, interested and you're not down low enough. Yeah. Look, you're down there at yeah. the baby. You're like laying on your stomach. Yeah, now, the baby's good. not looking at you and the baby's drooling everywhere. <laughs> Number one, you don't have to leave the drool in the shot. You can clone you can the lessen, drool. You can lessen the drool. You can, I would just clone you the drool clone out. out. Dude, this is, that's an easy clone job right there. Clone, yeah. the, clone the drool out. But look, you got separation from the background. That is You're a, down cool. low. This is a pro-looking picture. This one is not. But there's no reason you couldn't get the same thing here. Get down low, get the separation in the background, but you're going to get a, have to get her engaged. They look like they're looking at a parent or a friend off. Same thing here. Like the parent is not behind you. The parent is to your right or to your left, so they're not engaging with the camera. So over here, she is, she's off, but still, this does not have the professional look that this one has. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, the difference, too, is probably about 18 to 18 inches. Yeah. As far as the height. Get down low. And, and zoom in tighter. There's the zooming in, yeah. Because you don't really need all of this fence post. If we had a little bit of this fence well, post and, and a little you, bit of that fence post. If you went down and, and then to the left a little bit there, you would have that tree not banging right out yeah, of Yeah, look head. at that tree. Right out of, boom, coming straight boom. out of her head. Yeah, so more of this, less of this. Don't do this at all. Okay, boom, all right. easy. Done. <laughs> boom, done. Easy peasy. All right. Well, that's kind of scary. Can you can you bring this oh, one up? Oh, I guess we're not. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, that's that's creepy. A creepy theme there. Hmm. These shots just make me sad. It's not bad photography, I, and I know that we want our photos to to deliver some kind of emotion. emotion. I don't know what to say. Well, with that one, I, don't, I keep on looking at those creases in the background yeah, more than yeah, her. Yeah, you got to get rid of those, the I background. I just see that. Like, it just jumps out at me. The other thing is, I can't see your eyes at all, but that could be the look you're going for. I mean, but yeah, those creases just draw me in, in the background. That one. Well, I mean, you, you obviously yeah. want us to look at the knife. It's the brightest thing in there. The lighting needs a, a little bit of work. I, I don't know. It, is she holding the knife? Is somebody else holding the knife? I don't know. And I can, I can see the seam up here at the top. Yeah, it's another background thing. Yeah, the seam thing. You definitely work on the backgrounds. Let's work on the backgrounds. Maybe, I mean, that shot too is, uh, it's definitely a little bit fl flashy looking. You know, yeah, it looks. Versus the last one. Yeah. Versus even that and one. This, I this mean, that is, a, it's split, split lighting. lighting yeah. you're, you're wanting to, you know, put half your subject in the light. And, and that is, I mean, that's split lighting. It's, it's very movie poster-ish. Uh, technically, this is the best one because. That's my thing. That's, that's, that's the best one in my opinion. Yeah. Too. And the background is really distracting, and her hands are are very much a big part of this. Yeah, the positioning and too that yeah. the brightness is on her hand down there. Yeah, not it's not as face. bad. The look on my monitor yeah. versus the monitor we're looking at in the studio, it's not as yeah, bad. It's not as bad, but um, still. Yeah, the composition's not bad. Yeah, like I, I the composition's not bad. It just it needs a little bit of work here and there. That one's that's, pretty good. That's the best one. It is technically technically the best one. And I don't know what to think about this one. I just want to hug her. I don't know. Hey, but maybe that's a good thing. It, it appealed to emotion. But I just think overall the background on that one up at the top is weird. Yeah. And the lighting and is there. a little bit just kind of like flashy. Yeah, there's, there's not enough fall off. There's a little bit of fall off. Yeah. Well, yeah. all right. I'm, I, that's not the best critique. I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, well, after, after the break, we're going to look at more images and we have more of your comments and stuff. And on this special Kathy Perupski birthday episode of The Grid. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Kathy Perupski. 
I talk to so many photographers who are completely freaked out as soon as you mention lighting portraits on location. They hear that and they're like, oh, that that's too complex and I'm not sure about it and I, I haven't had good results with it. I, I think I know why that you're having a problem with it and I want to solve that problem for you. So I did an entire class uh, based on location lighting. And we're gonna go on location, we're shooting indoors, we're shooting outdoors, we're shooting in direct light, we're shooting with window light, we're shooting all these different things. We're mixing the strobe and the ambient. But when you see how easy this is, it's gonna change the way you think about taking lights on location. It is so much easier than you think it is. So should you be using TTL or should you be shooting in manual? Uh, what are your camera settings? What ISO should you be at? What's the right f-stop? If these things are questions that you have, we're gonna clear all of that up in this class. I'm gonna give you the actual settings to use. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. and You're gonna see it all from scratch. We went on location and you're gonna see the whole thing from beginning to end and it's gonna change the way you think about location portraits forever. So come and check out my brand new class on location lighting techniques exclusively at Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back, Scott and Eric. We had to go through a brief moment of uh, therapy on that break. <laughs> We, we looked at pictures of unicorns so we could mm -hmm. make it through the rest of the, of the podcast. We, we went back to drooling babies, too. Yeah, we went back to drooling babies. We're like, man, that drool looks good now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Uh, welcome. Oh, look who's here. Sam Haddix. Good morning from tomorrow yeah. in New Zealand. Ooh. Sam, we were just talking about you right before the show. Yep. You have All a, good stuff. Yep, you have disrupted the space-time continuum. Yeah, you've disrupted. There's, a, there's an alternate universe yes. where Sam is in New yes. Zealand. I, I saw a, uh, this morning a, a video from uh, Kaylee, who's in mm -hmm. New Zealand, and uh, I have to go watch it again after <laughs> last critique. Uh, anyway. Well, that was a good one. Uh, that episode with Sam, where Sam was, that would really help on that one where you were shooting at the 50. The one that was shooting at the oh, 50. Oh, yeah. Sam's um, stuff would have really helped. Yeah. Hey, uh, Sam's class, by the way, comes out this week. Yep. So tomorrow, Sam's class. Actually, I go. believe it might, might be, up. be up. Might be up tonight. Might be up. 
All right. I got ahead of the game. You will love Sam's class. Sam is awesome, and what he gets out of one light mm -hmm. is... Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely one to watch. Definitely one to watch. All right. Yep. And uh, Jamie John Foster, hello from Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. And then Anne's uh, saying, hey there, from Thunder Bay, Canada. Anna. It's Anna. Mm. Anna. Sorry, All right. Anna. And Alenka says... I agree. The pro plan is worth every penny in gold. All right. Just last week was taking advantage of the discounts you guys give. Anyway, thank you. And Todd says, Ooh, looking forward to my first Photoshop world. Yeah. So Photoshop world, a big conference is coming up. It's called mm -hmm. Photoshop world, but it's really a photography conference. It should be called photography world. It's photography, Photoshop, Lightroom world. Is yeah, what it it's is. really it's Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. Yep. Uh, we have two of them this year. One on the East coast, one on the West coast. The East coast one is coming up in Orlando. Or Lampa. Anyway, come on. Or over. Lampa. Come over to Orlando. That never took off. No, it didn't. <laughs> they tried to they tried to put a little town in between Orlando and Tampa called Orlampa, and it still has that yeah, sign it's coming still soon. Coming soon. Or Lampa. For the last 30 Downtown years. Downtown Orlampa. <laughs> but anyway, come come to Orlando. Uh we've got some great deals right now. And uh Oh yeah, early bird but specials. Do this. Go get your hotel rooms right now, or we're going to run out of hotel rooms. It happened last year. We sold out well in advance mm -hmm. of the conference. If you're thinking, I ought to go, I ought to go, go right now. Go to photoshopworld.com slash travel or click on the travel button when you get there and lock down your hotels Boom. now, either for there or Vegas this late summer. So it's going to be a blast, and we're going to have lots of fun folks so it'll be great. Uh, also, I just want to mention that I am now officially speaking at the World Modeling Convention this June in London. Cool. I'm going to be teaching uh, some portrait retouching techniques for photographers, and I'm very excited about it. It's going to sound like a really, really great event, and so I hope you go check it out. That is the World Modeling Convention is the name of it. And were you trying to uh, were you trying to shoot some places in London too while you're there? Yeah, I'm trying to shoot St. Paul's Cathedral. Anybody, St. Paul's Cathedral. Hey, you gotta Hook have. Up. A, Come on. You gotta get. You have to have a tight connection. Deep connection. Twice I've been there trying to shoot and it always falls through at the last second. So come on, somebody. Somebody Grid come nation. through. I need to get in there before they open the doors. I need to be able to use a tripod. You need to be Saint able to Paul's. do everything that you're not allowed to do. Exactly. All right. Let's look at some more pictures. Hey, what happened here? Something uh -oh. happened. You're there we go. In. Here we go. I accidentally zoomed. Ooh. I like. Eric like. I like. Look a little filter over top of it. That one's really cool. All right. Do you know that, why this is extra it, cool? It's a symmetry. They flipped it. They flipped it. Yeah, this is the same tree flipped. Yeah, co this so is cool. the same tree flipped. Yeah, and these they are the them. same. The same building. It's all flipped. They kept them. Now they may have flipped for a really legitimate reason, like they had to cover something. Maybe there was some scaffolding or something, or they just wanted to make a really well, unique. Well, it's just really unique. It's cool. It's really, but it is. Look at this. It's the same tree flipped. Yeah. This is this is the same a, reflection in the water. You can see the spots. I mean, it's. It's it's intentionally. I mean, you can tell it's flipped. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Not, it's it's. There's so, no there's, there's no getting around there. it. It's super flipped. But I like That's it. That's cool. I think this is. I think this photographer is doing some cool stuff. The really yeah. the only critique I have is um is one that may either be valid or not. Is when I look at this photo, all I, the first thing that goes through my mind is Maxis. Right yeah. between them, there's the word Maxis. If that isn't a key part of their wedding. Like that, for whatever reason, like would mean something to the bride and groom, mm -hmm. I would get rid of it immediately in Photoshop and right over here in the, the, the reflection, reflection in there. Yeah. But I would get rid of that so fast. That Maxis, it's just, that's all I see. I like, and it's right in the middle, dead center. Read the me. The other thing, that one has a little bit of a strong processing effect on it i mean mm -hmm. it's an intentional processing effect they're doing kind of like a like an instagram filter would do where it goes over yeah. the whole thing yeah, and the light looks kind of a little over. little intense yeah. i mean you could be I, and hey the bride might like that yeah. look i get it but, but here but the light is just kind of all over the place i would put a radial gradient in here mm -hmm. it's kind of center it up and kind of put there the light on them so you kind of know and then get rid of that Maxis stuff and i'll show you the side by side here so it's just, you know, you do lose a little bit of that blue effect, but you could add the blue effect on at the top if you really wanted to put that, you know, Instagram-y yeah. look on it there. All right, there you go. So uh, that's a – but good job. Good job. This is a good photographer. We're, we're mightily impressed. Oh, yes. 
That Let's picked roll up our on. spirits. Yep. That picked up our spirits quite a bit. And then there was this. These are all nicely done. That is a beautiful crooked skyline. Uh, the other one's crooked too. Yeah, that's crooked too. Yeah. You, you got to get that horizon crooked. line straight. It's like it's it's okay. But it's a very very pretty shot. Yes. Uh, your your opportunity though to make this awesome was to walk over to that dock and do a long exposure where that dock is solid, the water's moving, and you've got these awesome clouds. It still is a pretty shot. There's no one that's going to look at this shot. People are suckers for sunsets, yeah. and, and no one's going to look at this and go, yeah, that's not a, a great good shot. time. Look at the cloud, the that's textures in the cloud. That's a beautiful cloud formation. There, yeah, and, I mean, yeah. That's... And your horizon line is not too tall, but you, you were so close to making a killer but shot. But I do think if they, they straightened it out, took out some of that distortion that's there. Yeah. I mean, it would... It would still be a strong yeah, shot, but you're just, right. The yeah. dock would be yeah. probably money. This is has got great potential too. I would clean up, you know, maybe this little stick hanging off here, and some of these sticks. I know that they're really there, but you know, they're like not helping your shot. Uh, and straighten it, of course, because it's all leaning, you know. Uh, and this one is. I know that you're like, oh look, I caught the guy falling, but people fall in surfing all the time. It's like someone running with the ball. Is, and is he's anything really in not nah, this guy's in focus when i look Maybe? at this i don't know where to look yeah. two also by the way two of something is a horrible number like two yeah, they've one, done three five one three odd numbers are people are drawn to it and this is one guy two guy i don't know it's this one isn't working but these two are working you you, you, you just gotta you gotta get those horizon lines straight and this one was anyway not bad i mean it's pretty good stuff I do. I like that last one. Yeah, and it's the colors beautiful. And the sky, just straighten it out, distortion. Here we go. Scary tiger leopard thing. Did you make everything black and white mm -hmm. and leave one thing color? Yes. Selective color. And this is, this is nothing. This is this is this is not this is I'm sorry this is nothing because well, it's running the the lamp that you're trying to kind of it doesn't matter into it's the stupid. building there's it's just stupid nothing. shot this is I get it this is nothing okay I'm just, I'm just gonna say it <laughs> this is nothing all right I don't I'm not trying to be mean I'm just sick of seeing shots of nothing this is it, this is nothing you're walking you, down the street you, and you looked up you clicked. pushed the camera out. yeah you just yeah, pointed the come camera on up. this is not it's not Technically, that's what people need to get past is the technical. A lot of these shots, the technical, like, is it exposed right? Yeah. Is the color right? Yeah. Is it sharp? Yeah. yeah I get it. But I, I get what you're saying. It's There's nothing. Nothing, nothing to the shot. It's a snapshot at that point. It that is you've a snapshot. done a technical good job taking a technical You don't even photo. need to do your phone. We'll take the same shot. Just yeah. aim it up. It's nothing. Yeah. This is kind of nice. I, I think I just would have liked it in black, black and white. white. Either go black that. and white or go color, but the, the, the uh, what do you call it, selective, selective color, color thing is... It's killing it's it. It's so I mean, played. I, that would be a really good black and white shot. Yeah. It's the leading line of the yeah. train down there to the guy. Yeah. This would be great without this thing going right through his eye. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's... You're nice and tight, but like, it's like this this photo's got kind of a flaw that it's you know you we don't it's like to cool, see though. it is kind of cool but it's not great because it's not great you got something between cool. you and it if this wasn't here i think two things this one wasn't here and this one wasn't here you'd have a really cool shot mm -hmm. this is it's got you know you got to make up your mind is it color is it black and white because the the selective color thing in the middle is not awesome. I just go black and white on that one. And this is nothing. That's just a it's not nothing. A, that's a it's not a shot. shot. It's nothing. It's, it's not, a technical snapshot. No, it's a snapshot. It's not even a technical snapshot. It's just a snapshot. Yeah. It doesn't belong I mean, in technical. your stuff at all. It's just. Yeah. Get rid of that. Oh, that's right. Do more of this, but not with that color. And a little bit more of this. I'm sorry. That was, was kind of a harsh one. You know, for shooting somebody in direct sunlight, this isn't bad. They can't see it yet. There we go. For shooting somebody in direct sunlight. Now, normally shooting up somebody's nose is not a great 
thing, but mm-hmm. this this actually will, looks pretty good, and she's in direct sunlight. Back, which I that background's really cool too. The background is really cool. This is a well crafted, well crafted shot. And you know what? If you if you could, in, oh, that's, that's I, the I last one. That was the if last you one. could introduce the diffuser here, oh my gosh, you would have it. Uh, if you go to Shutterbug Magazine on Twitter, I I did a thing about shooting with a diffuser, mm-hmm. and it would make a tremendous difference. It's on t- Twitter today. Um, again, I don't know how you're getting away with shooting in uh, direct light, but it's it's not bad. And uh, this one, she looks a bit squinchy. She looks like the sun's getting to her. Yeah. You know, really, if you could put the sun at her back and then overexpose by one stop, you're doing a lot of things right, and you got a great subject, and I like the outfit, and I like the truck behind. you got a lot of things going on that are really good here. This is really, really good. But putting her in the direct sunlight, you're getting away with it, but I don't know if that's the goal is to get away so, with so it. So I think the critique there would be that you've got all the elements, right? So you've got an interesting subject, an interesting background, which cool the background styling. sometimes is more important than the foreground, yeah. like yeah. we know. Uh, but what would the lighting look like? If it was good lighting. You had great lighting. Great lighting. You had great lighting. That's what I think oh what you're gosh. saying. Is it great lighting? This might go from an uh, eight to an eleven. You, you know what? Go go look at Danny Diamond, D-A-N-I Diamond, and look at some of his natural light. It's stuff like this, mm-hmm. but it's done really really well like it's Mm -hmm. like with it's missing you're missing that one little thing you got you got you got like if you needed five things you've got four of them you're so close it's worth working on all right we got a couple more we're going to go through so we're going to when we come back from the break we are going to look at more images more criticues and hopefully i'll have a few more a few more uh what you call it maybe maybe we won't have any more of those uh snapshots yeah, we're going to we'll have better it. shots in the next, next one. I feel good about it. You know, as a kid, I wasn't even a teenager, I came down that trail with my dad. So that experience of like going down through Lewis and Valley, dealing with bears grabbing backpacks, all that stuff, that experience is part of the, the photograph. Probably coming up on at least 100 visits to this valley in my life. And still, I keep coming back. As John Muir said, this is the range of light. So range of light means, photographically, big expanse. John Muir was talking about the romance. Combining these elements in the, in the photograph will take time. But I first want to experience it. So to stop, take a deep breath, to show you how time evolved, even in that short window, and how light changed in that. So if there's anything that's going to improve your photography, it will be time. So to grow in your landscape photography, you have to get past that fear. And realize that fear, okay, is from failure. But from failure is where we learn and we grow. So you want your landscape photography to move forward. You want to get better at it, push the barrier. Don't worry about the failure, the fear, because no matter what happens, you're going to learn your landscape photography will get better. You know, Ansel Adams, one of his favorite quotes was, somebody asked him, how many pictures does it take to get the great one? One. Hey guys, welcome in the Netherlands. My name is Frank Dorof. I'm a Dutch photographer and we're in front of our studio. Now we all know about shooting portraits, right? Or shooting fashion. In our class on Kelby One, we're actually gonna do one step further. How to add a little bit of motion to really spice up that shot. How to use water effects. How to use gels, how to use lens flares. Those are absolutely amazing but also how to retouch those shots in a really quick workflow. But most of all, it's gonna be about lighting. It's gonna be about coaching that model. So why should you watch this class? Well, for the very simple reason. There are so many photographers out there. There are so many images out there. And you want your images to show up on top, of course, because they're more interesting, they're more evolving, they're more storytelling. 
there's so much you can do that is actually pretty simple instead of just putting a model in front of the camera. Just change a few things over with lighting or coaching or motion and you can really make a huge difference without doing anything else than just watching this class. We just jam-packed this class full of information about shooting portraits and it's only on Kelby One. You're gonna love it. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, we're back. Scott here with Eric, and uh, we got some more images for you. While yes. we were on the break, Eric wasn't familiar with the work of Danny Diamond. He went and pulled up his site. Yes, uh, right can we here. take a look at uh, on screen here, and you'll see. These are oh, this is great stuff. Look, backlit, natural, natural light. Natural light. It's, it, and that's, it's the last photos we looked at. I think they could, they could get closer to this. If yes. they just did some tweaks. Yeah. Now look at the out-of-focus background. Look how yeah. out-of-focus that background is. It the hides so the much. Natural light. Yeah. But they have the lights coming from the back. Like, right. Look at that, They're the all hair. backlit. Look at the hair. Yeah. You can see it's backlit on the left. Yeah. Look at the next one. Look at her, the strands yep. of hair. Backlit. Later in the day. Here's another Later one. Later in the day, backlit. Backlit. Yeah, that's good stuff. This is great Anyways, stuff. And, but that's that, awesome. that last photographer could be taken could shots be taken at this like, level uh, yeah. with that styling and that and that model and all that. Yeah, they had the elements. Now the, add yeah. the lighting. Get the lighting you'd right. Be like, you'd be like that. Yeah, because you, you don't want to go, well, I got away with this, the direct light. Yeah. Yeah, but it could look like that. Could look like that. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick look. We only have a few minutes left. Here we go. We're critiquing Lions, again. Lions on Parade. Lions on parade and tigers. No, lions. It's a lioness. Yes. They're running right at you. Yeah. That's your cue to run. But see how nice and clean this is compared to the one we saw before? Yes. The sweat coming off him. Now, if it were me, I'm going to tell you if I can see if I can do this. I like the, the oh, something had happened crazy there. Is it going to open in Photoshop? Come on, you going to open? What's going on here? Just thinking about it. There, there it is. Go. All right, all right, it's open. Here's what I would do. That eye is messed up here. That's, when you look at it, that's all I see is the messed up eye. Why not take the good eye, put it on its own layer, flip it the other way, Move it over there. Lower the opacity so you can see the other eye and make sure you line it up correctly. So by lowering the opacity while you still have it there, you can make sure that it goes in the right socket and that it rotates correctly to where it would be there. Then you raise it up and you add a layer mask so you can mask away. Hey, if you think he's going too fast, you can just go back and rewind and watch this. Or and you can watch the dozens and dozens of classes that we have on one. this. Yeah. To get the other eye in there. And you got, you're going to have to flip that right there over to the other side. You're going to have to flip that highlight in the eyes. But you, you got to work on it. It's not done. But you but could, that was a minute. Yeah, that's like, like not even a minute. And then you, watch. You'll, it's like... Anyway, good work, good stuff. Just good, good, good. Minor thing there, you know, but it's funny when other people look at your work at the things that they see that you've probably mm -hmm. looked at it a bunch and never really thought too much about it. Uh, let's, we, we're just about out of time. Like that one could lose the knife. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that mm, one. The horse. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful light, and beautiful light is hard to beat. And that's kind of nice too. It's it's got a it's got a big white glow around it. Yeah, it's going a little far. But I do like the sky, and I like the light coming through here. It's kind of interesting. And this is kind of yeah. Uh, this is this is really I good. I like the horse the best. Yeah. This one's pretty good, and this one's like it's well that one's just yeah, like and nothing sharp yeah, either. Yeah, like, and I, I also don't know what to look at. Is yeah. this a shot of the bridge? Is like. You yeah. do have foreground elements, which are good, but you're kind of off center from the foreground element you really want. I can't even tell what those foreground elements it, are. This shot's a little funky. You got to let that yeah. one go. All right, let we have time for go. one last one. Do we have one last one? Yeah, we got a couple more. Oh, now that's nice. Mm. Oh, look at all that. Took Oof. a little divot there. That looks good, though. 
Yes. And this is going to sound stupid, but I would probably get rid of the, the contrail. contrail. That's yeah. too easy to get rid of in Photoshop. That's a no-brainer. And put a little more light. There's shadows uh, in his face. Just brighten up that face a little bit. That's good execution, though. That's good execution. That's nice. Uh, this one's a little too flashy. flashy. Little flashy, and especially on the ground. Just darken that ground a bit mm -hmm. and uh, pull yeah. some of the yeah, highlights back I think back that's here. where you just got to tone it down a little bit, and you'd have a perfect it's shot. It's not bad. And yeah. this one's really good. This is nice. This is really well done. Oh, that smoke and the light and the smoke. Yeah. yeah. That's that's pretty nice. That's a nice shot. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good. This. Yeah, overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah that, really that nice. The golfer shot's really good. Yeah, the golfers and the basketball yeah. player. Do we have time for this one? Here we go. Real Ooh. quickly. I like the styling and the lighting, and that's yes. pretty good. Very, like, steampunk thing going on. I like that, too. That's nice. I like that too. Well done. Yeah. No, no critique. <laughs> yeah, good, 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 good. Keep, <laughs> Keep on doing it. Don't change a thing. Oh, huh, that's good yeah. too. That's nice. I kind of like yeah. the composition. And yeah. uh, I think you can in post really make this amazing. You could pop it a little more. Oh, you cut yeah, off you the gotta, wings. You get a word hog and you cut off the wings. Mm. Yeah, the, the wings, wings being cut off, that's pretty bad. And. Uh, I don't know. Could have a little bit it's, more room on the yeah, you, some separation. Again, I don't know. Yeah. This this doesn't do it for me. This doesn't, this I think That's has some potential. Strong, strong it looks one. too bright. Like you shot it too late in the day. So what if we lower the exposure a oh, little yeah. bit? And then what if we dropped in a gradient at the top to darken the top of the sky? And. I would just maybe go in here with a brush and br and brighten the plane just a little bit with a small brush. And th this is, I'm doing a hack job here because I'm just doing it like in 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. The I, basic premise. Basic premise is bring the, bring the plane out a little bit more. And, the, and I think, I think there's something, if you work it a little bit, there's something more dramatic yeah, I mean, and there's more. There's definitely something there and it's, you could, yeah, you just got to kind of, uh, up the drama. Yeah, up the drama and save the drama for your mama. Hey, one more thing I That's think it. I would do is uh, I think I would darken the rest of the field a bit. That's not helping you any. Mm. So I think you got yeah. something there. I think that, you know, you could, you know, let me see if I can get out of this before and after view and I'll show you a little better. <laughs> Jack says uh, that my first critique on here, I got slammed. Best feedback I ever got. Oh, no. Hey, great. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Uh, let's see. Brigitte says, hi, Brigitte. Says, when I had my first critique, it wasn't the best. They were being honest, and to be honest, I didn't know how to take it, but it was the best thing that happened to me. It made me push myself. I thought about composition, lighting, post-processing, and every time I took a photo after that critique, I said to myself, now what would Scott say about this shot? Doing that helped me so much. Let me tell yeah. you, Brigitte, Brigitte was in the finalist, right? Wasn't yeah, she, she was in the finalist. She was a finalist, for the, finalist for the gallery competition. That's how good Brigitte has gotten. Her stuff mm -hmm. is. I know. I can picture it now. Yeah. I know what her her She's still life. Still stuff, life. Yeah. Her stuff is really good. She was this close. I was like, ooh. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, that would have been great. Yep. So uh, anyway. Well, thanks, everybody, who turned in uh, images. I, I know that it's a lot putting yourself out there. That's why we call yes. them blind critiques, so we don't have to know your name and so we can be honest with you. And I hope that everyone that got a critique today takes it in the right method. But before we leave, we're going to pick some winners, Christina. Oh, she's running over to get them now. We're going to pick winners for we've got a Platypod Ultra. Ultra. We've got uh, my Photoshop, Photoshop book, Light which is now in my landscape book. You landscape get the print book. version uh, and, and a lens pro to go. We need four people who are watching live in the show today. Left us comments, and we know that you're uh, you're watching because for the landscape book, right, Tim, Tim Ziegler, you are the happy landscape winner. Book. I hope you're happy. So Tim, it's not you know it's still on press. So wait a few weeks, you know. But we we got your name, and Christina will contact you for the rest of your natural life. Lens Pro to Go gift card goes to Sherry Harvey. Sherry Harvey. Sherry, you just won a Lens Pro to Go fifty dollar gift card. <laughs> photo, photo. Oh, Platypod, Platypod. goes to J L Meredith. J L Meredith. J L Meredith. Congratulations, you just won a Platypod Ultra and, and 
Ramona, uh, Ramona James, was it? Yes. Ramona James, you just won Photoshop for Lightroom users. All right, thank you to all of our sponsors. And Eric, did you want to say anything before we go? Hint, hint, think about it. I don't know. Think got, about it. We got a special episode? Yes. Yes. Yes, we gotta so stick around. If you're if you're around, you want a bonus episode of the grid, stick around because we'll be filming another episode. Yes, yeah, so we're filming a bonus episode. And so if you're watching, and by the way, we started early. We're eight o'clock in the UK. Did there only four hour difference between us? Yeah. Four hours. Daylight that's crazy. Time. So uh, if you want to stick around, we are filming a bonus episode and we we the topic yeah, that we have really needs an audience because it's ah. Yeah, definitely. Cause um, but then yeah, cause the crew's out um next week uh, yeah. filming in Costa Rica. Yeah, the crew travel class. The whole crew is heading down to uh, uh doing a, a rainforest class in Costa Rica next week, and so. we were going to be short handed here, so we thought we would film a bonus episode. So stick around, five minutes, and we're going to launch yeah, we'll back into right another back one. In. And I'm going to change jackets. So there's that. There you go. See you guys. See ya. Hopefully in like five minutes.